Hi, AccuWeather.com meteorologist Joe Bastardi. Monday morning, uh, global sea ice report here. And uh, you can see we're clearly above uh, 2008 and 2007. Uh, you see what that 2005 is? I think that's where we're going to be next year. I have been uh, at sea for about 40 years. Half of that, I have been taking ships through the ice, both going to the Antarctic and up here in the Arctic region where we are right now. In the time I spent in the Arctic, I have observed reduction in the area of sea ice. For example, I took this ship north of Alaska for four consecutive summers. It was usually quite difficult to go around the northern tip of the American continent. Now new navigational routes are opening. That is uh, a significant uh, difference that you can observe on the spot. The data show that the sea ice cover on the Arctic Ocean is melting much faster than the models have projected. Often in the media you read that the IPCC is exaggerating things. I wish that were true. I think the data are showing the opposite, that in important areas uh, the IPCC so far has underestimated the problem. The sea ice has been melting much faster than we've been able to, to run predictions for. And I think that a piece of the puzzle could be the absorption of solar energy into surface waters. And then in fact, this value is much higher than we have previously assumed. And there's really no place else on the planet right now that is changing as fast as Arctic is changing. And we don't just see this in the glaciers melting or retreating or warming temperatures or permafrost thawing or losses of the sea ice cover. We see it in every aspect of the Arctic environment. This is a widespread change that we're seeing and it's really sort of an indicator of what's, of what's going to come, I think, for the rest of this planet. Polar expert Dr. Juliana Strova and her team have found that Arctic summer ice is decreasing much faster than climate models have predicted. If we look at our climate models, they all say that as you increase your greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, you're going to lose that ice cover. This is just an example of um, 15 climate models used in the IPCC report. The red here is the observations. So if you look at this, I mean, all the models say you're going to be losing your ice. You know, and depending on when you might become ice-free, it might be 2050 to sometime beyond 2100, but they all say the same thing. And I think what's important, there's, there's two sort of important points from this slide. One is, if you look at the observations, you notice it's happening much faster. So the idea that we'll go ice-free by 2050, you know, maybe it'll be sometime around 2020, 2030. But I think the other really important point that this figure makes is that all these climate models, although they're not getting the rate of change right, they are all in agreement with the observations that it's going down. And you don't get this. If you were to run these climate models and you don't put in the observed records of greenhouse gases, None of those models show the ice going away. None of them do. But as soon as you force them with the observed record of greenhouse gases, they all say the same thing. They all show a declining sea ice cover. And I think that that's really important because it really helps to implicate greenhouse gases in the changes that we're seeing right now in the Arctic. After decades of steady decline, in 2007 the minimum ice extent crashed precipitously. 2008 and 2009 totals were slightly higher. It's interesting because, you know, when that happened, the skeptics were all like, oh, look, you know, there's no big deal. It just, it came back. It's recovering. It really isn't recovering. I mean, being the second lowest versus the lowest is not really recovery in my mind. After two years of higher totals, some researchers wondered if 2007 was an anomaly and that summer ice minimums were on their way to stabilizing. In 2010, totals were again sharply down. 2011's minimum has confirmed what many experts are calling a death spiral. The record low in 2007 prompted a debate which climate scientist Dr. Seymour Laxon of University College London says is now over. I think the fact that we now have a second minimum very close to or exceeding the 2007 minimum, 
uh, means that this is the 2007 wasn't a one-off and we are seeing part of a, a larger and a, a trend which is rather more rapid than we would have predicted say 10 years ago. You see we are now within um, less than one degree of passing some critical tipping points. Um, this year we're beginning to see a tipping point being passed in the Arctic where the sea ice is beginning to decrease in the area that it covers. And this is a good example of a tipping point because the way a tipping point works is there are positive feedbacks in the climate system and if you pass a point such that these feedbacks begin to come into play then it takes very little additional forcing in order to have a very big change. Right. In the Arctic it's a case of the, the white ice decreases in area so there's more sunlight absorbed by the dark ocean that warms the ocean and melts more ice and we can end up losing all of the ice in the Arctic. Although the media focuses on September ice minimums Ice extent has been dropping steadily year-round, including the peak summer months when the 24-hour Arctic sun is at its most intense. I think the ice is going to be, we'll probably start seeing ice-free conditions by about the mid-2030s, and by the middle of the century, we'll probably start seeing 8 to 12 weeks or 2 to 3 months of ice-free conditions. You can see we're clearly above uh, 2008 and 2007. Uh, you see what that 2005 is? I think that's where we're going to be next year. All right, we're going to recover dramatically here uh, with the uh, cold that is coming. And that's simply because of uh, you know, what uh, my studies have showed, and we'll see if I'm right. Anna Sorensen has seen the number of cruise ships venturing into the Arctic Circle soar and welcomes it. The more people that learn uh, the, the, the beauty of the area and how fragile it is, the more are the chances that we can uh, try to protect it. It's not just polar bears that'll be feeling the heat when the ice melts. Scientists at the World Wildlife Fund say thousands of walrus that fish off the ice will have to adapt to their new environment sooner rather than later. These walrus have had to gather on the Alaskan coast because the ice flows that would normally support them at sea this time of year are simply not there. Most experts agree that an ice-free Arctic will occur within decades, some say within years. The question now is what will its impact be around the planet and on those that depend on it. The one that I worry about at least as much is the impact on species on the planet. A given temperature line is now moving poleward at a rate of about 50 to 60 kilometers per decade, about 35 miles per decade. And it's been doing that now for 30 years. Species can live within certain climatic zones. Mm -hmm. So those at the high latitudes, in effect, we're pushing them off the planet. We're removing the conditions in which they can survive. If we exterminate species, we are leaving a much more desolate planet for our children and grandchildren in any generation that we can think of. I think I've heard you say that it would be a different planet we would have. It would be a different planet physically and especially in terms of the life forms on the planet.